All right, appraisers, this is Brandon with Spark. And in this video, I'm going to be showing those of you who use ACI how to actually export data from Spark and load it into your ACI report. OK, so let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing I want to cover is exactly what Spark is going to put into your report. So if you have loaded up some potential comps into the grid side of Spark and you hit export, Spark is going to send those comps for your grid right into your report. However, if you've also done the market analysis, even though you're looking at the grid screen, when you hit export, Spark will send the market analysis over. So basically, whatever you've done in that session of Spark will be sent over into your report. So for example, there's a lot of you who do the grid side of Spark and the market analysis at the same time, then go back the next day or sometime after your actual inspection and then do the cost side of Spark and get the cost data and run the cost approach. So if that's the case for you, you don't want to just leave Spark open overnight and then the next day after your inspection go in, hit cost data and load in your cost data. Because if you do that, that means that the next day after you've done your inspection, if you hit export, it's going to send over the grid, the market analysis, and the cost data all at the same time. And I'm assuming most of you, before your inspection, you actually load your potential comps and your market analysis into your report. So then you'll be loading it in twice and that can cause issues, especially if you've already maybe tweaked some of the comps in your report. Maybe you moved some around as far as um, the order of the comps. And so you don't want Spark to be messing with all that. So just remember that whenever you hit export, whatever you've done in Spark will be sent over into your report. And if you're not sure, just click it and see if you've done it. So I have done the cost approach. I actually use site extraction and allocation as well. And I can click on market analysis and see I've done my market analysis as well. So now I know that since I've done all three of those, I've used all three sides of Spark, then when I hit export, it's gonna send all that data over. So just be aware of that. Once you know how to use it, it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. And it's nice because you're not locked into any kind of workflow. You can do any part of Spark at any time without having to do other parts of Spark at the same time or um, I, there's other software out there that limits you. You have to only do one side at a time, whereas ours, you can combine them as well. Uh, okay, so now let's actually go in and send some information over into my report. Okay, so I'm going to hit export here, and then you're going to see this screen pop up, and this screen will be bigger or smaller depending on how much of Spark you have filled out. And what I'd recommend is the first time you use Spark, try and leave these settings kind of alone unless you're really confident about something so you can at least see what spark can put into your report and then just tweak it from there uh, that's what i'd recommend doing if if you're uh, comfortable with that and there's a couple things you'll see here one is i can click selected charts spark will show me the charts that are about to go into my report and i can tweak them if i want to i can remove them and then there's a whole other video covering how to fully customize these charts um, create brand new charts from scratch um, any of that kind of stuff. Also customize the comments and the analyses that Spark does, but that's for another video, so you can check that one out. And by the way, to do that, just a little side note, um, just click the gear icon. I'm on the market conditions analysis, so you click the MC help, and then you'll see a list of videos, and you can just click the one about customizing the analysis, and that will also show you how to customize the charts. All right, so let's get back into that. You click export, and then if you want Spark to apply time adjustments to your comparables in your grid, then you click apply time adjustments. And then Spark will show you the analyses that you wanted it to perform. And by the way, you have control over this little per month down here. If you prefer to analyze things per quarter, per half year, or per year, you can change that. And so I can see this is how I like to analyze my markets. Um, yours might look a lot different than this. And so I'm thinking, yeah, I probably want to apply a one percent per month adjustment and you can also tweak that further down here are some settings where you can kind of mess around with that and then i can also apply price ratio adjustments so for example if um, my sale price to list price ratio is 99 percent then spark will adjust your um, listings and pendings down that one percent if you want it to to do that you just type in what you want your percent to be now spark will show you what it is based on a few different analyses that you can customize and I can see it's 100%, but just to show you, I'm just going to do a 99, so it actually applies an adjustment. All right, and then I can just hit report data. And then once I do that, Spark is now going to package all of that information up into an XML file that will send it all over into ACI. Okay, and there we go. 
looks like it's done. Now it's downloaded that file down here. And by the way, I'm using Google Chrome and uh, basically Chrome automatically downloads those files and puts them right here on your screen. It's also in your downloads folder on your computer. You can change uh, the settings in Chrome right here, go to settings and you can change your download settings. So it will ask you every time where you want to save that file, if that's what you prefer. And if you're in Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge, it is going to ask you, you just choose save, name it, whatever you want, save it wherever you want. And Firefox, um, as you know, if you use Firefox, will save the file right up here in a little download icon. Uh, okay, so I've got my file. I'm ready to use it. Now I just go into ACI. So I'm going to pull that up right here. And here's ACI. Now this is a completely blank report. Yours most likely will not be blank. You'll have information in it. But this is kind of just to show you everything that Spark's going to be able to put into your report. And all you do is you click eServices, Import Analysis Data, and then Spark. And by the way, if Spark doesn't show up here, that just means you need to do an update, an update to ACI. So just click Help and do an ACI web update and that will solve that problem. So you click here, go to import analysis data and then click Spark. Now ACI is gonna pop open with this window. You basically tell it where that file is that Spark just downloaded to your computer. That's the XML file. And then you, and by the way, odds are, unless you told it specifically otherwise to save in a certain folder, it saves it into your downloads folder. So just click downloads, click the file and then click open. Now ACI, ACI, excuse me, created this little window for us. So this is unique, at least for now, to Spark. So when you're wanting to load data in, you have a couple different options. You can either overwrite all of the fields with the data from Spark. So anytime data, um, Spark wants to load data into a field, it will be able to overwrite what's in your report. And that's what most software that integrates with ACI does by default. Um, but they added this feature for us, which just means that um, and especially helpful for those of you who use templates to start reports, that Spark will only be able to load data into the field if it's empty. So that means if you start with a template and you have some basic stuff filled out and you don't want Spark to mess with that stuff, then you'd want to choose this field so that Spark will not overwrite those fields that you want it to keep. Just be careful with that because some of you pre-fill out some of the information in the grid, like the data source line, with something like, your MLS number or you know your MLS name and then pound sign and then you leave the area after that empty so that you can type in the ML, actual MLS number and then the days on market. But if you have anything at all in that field, even just a space bar, then ACI is going to read that as not empty and then Spark will not be able to load data into it. So just be careful with that. If it looks like Spark worked but only halfway and some fields are not fully filled out, that's most likely the reason. Okay, so I'm going to click, let's just go ahead and click Overwrite Existing Fields. So it doesn't really matter. This is a completely empty report, so it doesn't really matter either way. Okay, and we've got the data filled in here. So as you can see, it fills out the majority of the top of page one there. We've got some basics filled out here. Now, Spark will never count. Um, automatically check any check boxes for you for your market trends. That's something that we believe is an appraiser's job. So you, Spark will present all the data to you the way you want to see it so that you can make an informed decision and draw a conclusion, but it will never actually check the boxes. So that's something I did when I was in Spark, I checked those boxes. It will load in your low, high, and predominant price and age there. And some of the improvements information will be filled out. Now let's go ahead and skip on down to the sales comparison approach. So we got the top of page two filled out, got my comps loaded in here. Now you can see it did load in those time adjustments that I wanted it to calculate. And then I wanted it to round to the nearest hundred, which it did. And you can see this one, it didn't put a time adjustment. And that's because I said, don't adjust anything that contracted within 60 days of the effective date. So it did not make an adjustment to this one. All right, and let's go ahead and, oh, by the way, down here. So Spark will correctly check the box for your prior transfer history, and it will load in any prior transfers right here, or the most recent transfer, I should say, um, when relevant. And then on top of that, if you, let's just say your subject property transferred three times in the past three years, Spark will actually load in comments for all three of those transfers to hopefully save you quite a bit of time in doing that. Um, and you can either chat, choose for Spark to put that comment in right here, or it can put it into a separate text addenda, which is the default setting in Spark. And so I'll show you that here in a minute. Let's go ahead and check out the other comps we loaded in. So there's those. 
we got 7, 8, and 9, and we got 10 and 11. And by the way, if you don't already know, your limit in Spark for actual comps into your sales grid is 30. So that's the max that we can load in at this point. And you can see with my listing, or this is actually a pending, it did load in a 1% downward adjustment for the sale price to list price ratio being 99% which is what I chose just for the demo, even though it really was 100. Um, okay, so that's that. Now let's move on to the cost approach. So we've got the cost approach here. Spark will put in comments. If you use Spark to help with site value, then it will put in comments here what methods you used and what the results were of those methods. Loads in all the data there. Um, our cost provider, which is dwelling cost, the quality rating you used, and there's like a layman's explanation of what that quality rating means that we'll put into your um, cost approach as well if you want it. And by the way, you can turn off the comments if you don't want Spark to put those in. Uh, so that's not a big deal if you don't like those. Okay, and then the 1004MC. Again, we Spark will not check any of those boxes. Those are boxes you, the appraiser, would have checked when you were in Spark. And by the way, you don't have to choose those in Spark. If you don't want to, you can just hit export. Don't even worry about it. And then check these once you actually get it into your ACI report. Same thing, uh, we load in all the data for the numbers here. Those uh, 27 numbers, the comments, and you have full control and you can customize these comments. And let's see what else we got. Photos, now by default, Spark is not going to load any photos into your report, but it can. So if you just check the box when you hit export for loading in the photos, it will do that. Um, the, you know, the comp photos, all that kind of stuff. And let's go ahead and scroll on down. Now I did have Spark load in the an REO addenda just to show you how it works. So Spark loaded in this addenda here and it loaded those listings in just the way I wanted. And let's see, we got charts. So the way I have Spark set up is it loads in a chart and then comments related to that chart right next to it. And so we've had a lot of uh, clients or lending institutions tell us that they prefer to have the comments associated with the chart right next to it because it's just easier for them to understand and review that kind of thing. Um, you can see this one, I, I had the comment turned off. It was just for like a demonstration, I turned it off. Um, but that's the way it works. You can load in the charts how you want to with or without comments. And you can also have full control over how the charts are built, like I mentioned earlier. And let's go ahead and scroll on down. So here's that text addenda with the prior transfer history. So you can see for the subject property, it loads in three years worth or 36 months worth by default of transfers. And you can customize that as well. And the same with the comps, it loads in 12 months worth of transfer history by default, but you can customize that. And there it is. So we do have a property in here. It's a comp that transferred three times in the past 12 months. And so Spark did load in all that transfer history information for you. So you don't have to go and type that in yourself. All right, I think that's it. The rest is just some basic photos. So yeah, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you like it and, and enjoy it. And please let us know if you have any questions. And that's it. Thanks again for watching.